Welcome to the Capital News. I am your host, Alex Caritas. Today is Friday, July 31st, 2020. Thank you so much for joining me. This is just going to be a weekly wrap-up. But before I get started, I do want to let the audience know that I am going to be away for the next week. I am going to take some of my, uh, well, I'm going to take my microphone with me and my laptop so I can hopefully get a few podcasts out next week. But if you do not hear from me, that is why. But I will be back for certain the following week. But again, hope to do a few while on the road. <clears throat> so first to market performance. And of course, yesterday we talked at length of the GDP figures, the initial jobless claims, the continuing jobless claims figures, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And despite the fact that these, with respect to GDP, were historic, terrible losses, and a continuation of terrible numbers, unfortunately, when it comes to the jobless picture, but of course that's no surprise here to this audience at the Capitol News, stocks couldn't care less. I mean, earlier on they did. They seemed to be sympathetic with Main Street, but then they say, ah, screw it. It's the law, by the way. We're not allowed to close down for the day. So they make it into the green, right? Especially NASDAQ. NASDAQ. The rest of the world's not buying it. I don't know why. I don't know why Asia was down, Europe was down. I don't know what they don't understand. The worse the news, the better the stimulus, the bigger the stimulus package, more spending, more begging, borrowing, stealing of the money that we don't have. Why doesn't Europe and Asia, why don't they wake up to this? Why don't they get with the program of what's going on here in the United States? Same picture again today, however. Earlier in the session, you have the major indexes down, but at the end of the day, they miraculously rallied into positive territory once again. The Dow Jones Industrial Average gained 115 points, up four-tenths of 1%. The S&P 500 gained 25, up eight-tenths of 1%. And the NASDAQ 100 gained an additional 190 points, up 1.8% for the day. However, the small cap, Russell 2000, that actually closed down for the day, but off of its lows earlier in the trading session. Again, when we're talking about Japan, of course, they closed down nearly 3% for the day, and the continuation of another sea of red in Europe, anywhere down from 1.5% to about 1.5%, depending on the index, depending on the country. And then Australia also closed down to close the week down 2 percentage points. On the dollar front, I think I did misspeak uh, yesterday. I think I said the dollar might hit, hit resistance. I meant to say support might have trouble finding support as it continues its descent, if it should bust through to the downside through its lows of January of 2018, it's not likely going to find support for quite a while. So there could be quite a downfall if we get there. However, there was a little bit of a bounce back in the dollar exchange today, the dollar index today, 93.45. Again, keep an eye on the dollar and we will. On the share front, well, of course, NASDAQ 100 was rallying. Apple was up and closed 10.5 percentage points to the upside. 10.5% putting on 40 points today alone. And Apple announced a 4 to 1 stock split. Tesla gave back 3.8%. Microsoft added 0.4%. Amazon gained 3.5%. Alphabet, the parent company of Google, gave back about 2%. And Facebook rallied 7.6% for the day. Again, folks, a big joke. I told you from the outset. And I told you again a couple of days ago when these big tech bigwigs were marched up on Capitol Hill via Zoom meeting, via Skype, whatever, teleconference, to get a scolding from congressmen and women that nothing was going to happen. And even Thunder Thumbs had to chime in, of course, and said, well, if those damn congressmen and women, <clears throat> if they don't act, if they don't do something against these big boys here who are suppressing speech and doing this, that, and the other, I'm going to do something. That's a bunch of hogwash. You're obsessed with the stock market. These five, six companies, for all intents and purposes, are the stock market. If you actually do something that has any teeth and is going to affect them, the stock market is going to tank. 
So it ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen. And all of these politicians are dancing in the pockets of all of these people who were testifying the other day. The market wasn't buying it. The stocks went up then. They continue to go up today. It's a joke. It's a game. That's all it is. Are you understanding this point now? Nothing is going to happen to them. They are not going to be broken up if you think they're too big. And if you think that's a solution, read our book, The Cynic's Guide to Investing. Because we talk about such a scenario back with Standard Oil and Rockefeller. Because back then, Congress thought, well, Standard Oil, too big of a company. They broke them up. Rockefeller became even wealthier. Because now, instead of there being one big company, there were several larger companies. And so piece by piece, he became wealthier as an effect of this. I mean, Congress, it doesn't matter the century, it doesn't matter the date, it doesn't matter the names. They don't know what they're doing. So I said, it's, it's typically, it's almost a law of nature. What they want to do, the opposite happens. You have the CARES Act, it's the Nobody Cares Act. You have the Patriot Act, it's the most unpatriotic piece of legislation that may have ever passed. Okay? So just understand that. It's a good rule of thumb until you're proven wrong. That's the right side to play it. On the commodity front, we have WTI trading at $40.27 a barrel, WTI at $43.62, natural gas at $1.82. Gold and silver had another nice rebound for the day. Spot gold is at $1,973 an ounce. Spot silver is at $24.31 an ounce. And again, because of what we heard this week from the Federal Reserve, that they're not thinking about thinking about thinking about raising interest rates, and I would just cut that completely short. They're not thinking. They're not thinking. But because they're not thinking about increasing interest rates or doing anything that would resemble what would happen under free market capitalist and a free market capitalist environment scenario well then you have to pay attention to the precious metals because country after country central bank after central bank is destroying their currency their currency well gold and silver have proven to be money actual money for thousands and thousands of years so if the pendulum is swinging back to something, it's going to swing back to gold and silver. Now, of course, maybe something happens in the crypto space too, but that really doesn't have any type of fundamental backing. It hasn't really proven the test of time. Gold and silver have, and they'll continue to do so. Now, that doesn't mean that Bitcoin or Ethereum or any of the others that are out there, and there's a handful of them, that's not to say that they couldn't also rally and make new, new highs and go to the moon. But I don't know enough about them. That's why I don't talk about them. And I don't see the fundamental characteristics of them. I understand gold and silver. I understand a whole host of other things that I discuss here. But crypto, to me, it just it can make you a lot of money potentially. But you're going to have to do your own homework on that when I, have, I really don't have much to opine on that. But there's so much money, currency, I should say, floating around that if it catches another bid, who's to say Bitcoin doesn't go back up to 20000 or wherever it was at its all-time high, along with the others. But seriously, pay attention to gold and silver because there is no end in sight as to what these governments and central banks are going to continue to do. Over the weekend, we're supposed to have further meetings between White House officials and members of the House and Senate to come up with another multi-trillion dollar monstrosity that is just going to make these problems even worse, which is, again, proving my point. Pay attention to the precious metal space. It's an election year. Something else is going to get passed. It's just a question of size. It's going to be at least a trillion dollars. At least. We don't have it. But that didn't stop them before when we didn't have the additional $3 trillion that they just borrowed in the second quarter alone. They don't care. They don't care. But Apple can gain 10%. Facebook can gain 7%. Up and up they go. And yet you have 30 million Americans who are on the verge of starving, who don't have enough food. So figure that one out. And let me know what you come up with. Uncle Sam's U.S. 10-year Treasury junk note is yielding 0.54%, so still somewhat range-bound, but 
getting closer and closer to reaching an all-time low and really testing its lows of, to where it was back in March and April. This is, again, a situation where you have a difference of opinion between the stock market, especially the high flyers, and the bond market. And again, the bond market is typically the better barometer, and I imagine that will be the case this time around as well. So buckle up. Again, as a recap, next week we are expected to hear from Joe Biden. He is going to make a major announcement as to who he is choosing as his vice presidential pick. In the running, I think you have Senator Elizabeth Warren, Senator Kamala Harris, and Susan Rice, former National Security Advisor and Obama Administration official. I think those three are probably the most likely to get the nod. Of course, there could be somebody else. Uh, my my guess, again, as I, I stated earlier this week, I think it's really between Senator Elizabeth Warren and Susan Rice. Again, and I stress this, I am not saying that that's who I want him to pick or who I think is would make a good president because I don't think that they would make a good president. I'm not voting. I'm not voting. I've made this crystal clear, and I'll continue to make this crystal clear as the audience continues to grow and I have new uh, listeners coming in. I'm, I'm not voting. I'm not condoning this. There's not going to be any difference. It's not going to happen. There's no draining of the swamp. There's no making America great again or keeping America great again with the policies that they are enacting. This is basically the death nail for the United States of America. They trample and shred the Constitution and then shred it again. It's, it's in our face. It's on a daily basis. They're going to continue to do this. It doesn't make a difference. Whoever wins... There's going to be massive protests and massive riots. It doesn't matter who wins. It's coming. It might be worse if Trump wins because those on the left seem to be a lot wackier when it comes to these protests and riots. But we don't know. Because if Trump loses and his most loyal of supporters are frustrated or think that it was a rigged election, all hell could break loose. So we can say, well, it's not going to be good because we already see the lefty Looney Tunes protesting and rioting. They say, oh, well, if Trump wins, well, they're just going to amp, amp it up a little bit, which I think is logical. But we don't know what would happen if Trump loses and what some of his most loyal supporters would do. Because believe me, they can be just as loony. Make no mistake about it. This is a country in decline, unfortunately, because there is no leadership, there is no honesty, there is no truth-telling. Nobody wants to sacrifice, it's just kick the can down the road, kick the can down the road, kick the can down the road. People can't make the connection. They say, oh, well, people have been complaining or warning about the effects of major deficits and a national debt that's as big as it is. But say, well, nothing's happened, there's been no collapse, everything keeps going on. No, there has been a collapse. There has been a decline. We are in it. People unable to find jobs before COVID-19. The amount of student loan debt. Keeping people back. Holding people back. Deteriorating infrastructure. Endless wars that we don't win. An education system that is a joke. K-12 to and the college and university system. It's a joke. And a lot of them are going to be going out of business, the universities and colleges. That's going to be another wave of the insolvencies as well. It's one hit after the next, and they can't make the connection. Debt destroys growth, period, end of story. The more you tack on, the harder it is to get out of it. I don't know what it, why this concept eludes people, why it escapes people, why they cannot grasp it. Because they think, oh, well, it's the government, and they have a central bank, and they got a printing press, and so they can just keep printing it, printing it, printing it, and that has no negative side effects. And again, if that's true, which it isn't, but for the sake of argument, if it is, then we're done paying, <clears throat> paying taxes, and we're done paying our own bills. Just send them to the Federal Reserve. No negative side effects. No negative consequences. That's what this is coming to. It's MMT. It's already here. Universal basic income. It's already here. It's not going to go away anytime soon. 
especially not for the remainder of this year because there's a presidential election and nobody wants to say, man up, sacrifice, we've made a mistake. And it's not going to happen afterwards either. It's just going to get worse. Because the true economic sacrifices that are going to have to be made regardless of what the government does is really going to start coming next year. Because of all of the spending and everything that they have done, they've thrown at the market, at the economy, to hide as much as the oncoming damage that is oncoming. Make no mistake about it. The millions that are awaiting eviction, they're just waiting in the wings. The insolvency crisis, you know, prime, you know, front and center, as we discussed yesterday briefly, were those 800 Dunkin' Donuts stores that are going to be closing down. That's the chain. That's that's the logical chain of events that you can put together, which we have been doing here for months, stating from the beginning that this is not going to be a V-shaped recovery, that this is structural now. These changes are going to be very, very long-lasting. If you're not going to work, you're not going to Dunkin' to get a cup of coffee, a bagel, a donut, a muffin. You don't have to do it. And you're not, and you're saving money. And you add that up across the country in so many other instances. But people are familiar with Dunkin' Donuts. People go get a cup of coffee. You understand what I'm talking about. That's other big franchises, other major corporations. And unfortunately, it's, it's very small mom and pop shops too. People who want to shop local, get a local cup of coffee. Local bakery. Local deli. This is, this is long-lasting, and you cannot think logically that, well, we're going to shut it down, and then we're just going to flip a switch, and it's just going to come roaring right back. That's not how it works. And, of course, next week, next Friday, we will get the jobs report for July. And a number that I'm going to be very curiously paying attention to is the number pertaining to permanent job losses, which, if memory serves me correctly... I believe it's 2.9 million. That was as of last month. That was for the month of June, which was an increase, a big increase from the prior month. I think of some five, 600,000. 3 million permanent job losses. And all of those people are going to be looking for work, and they're all going to be competing against each other in their respective fields. Maybe they're going to go outside of what they're comfortable with because they got bills to pay. They got a house to pay for. They got kids to feed. So yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm technically an accountant. That's where I was. But now I'm going to go do something. I'm going to go sell cars. I'm going to go do something else. So you have more and more people competing for fewer and fewer jobs. You know what that means, don't you? The supply of labor increases. The demand is down. Your wages are going to start coming down, which we're already seeing that as well. Which again is a bigger picture, a bigger, a more true picture, if you will, of the jobs market because a lot of people may not have been laid off because they opted to take a pay cut. You think that's temporary? Or you think that's more likely to be permanent? And if more people choose to work from home, if they have that option, I imagine that over time, businesses will say, well, you have the convenience of staying at home. You don't need to have all of that expense when it comes to a vehicle or other transportation needs. Nah, we're not going to pay you 80000 We're going to pay you seventy, And people are going to take it, especially if you have a glut of supply of labor on the market, which is what we are going to be witnessing. This is going to take a very, very long time for these markets to clear. And the more quote-unquote stimulus they throw out there, the longer it's going to take. This is what they did in 1920s, 1930s, which turned a Great Recession into the Great Depression. They're doing it again. And they're not stopping. And they're not even thinking about doing anything that would resemble a free market. So keep that in mind. And then on another interesting note, as we discussed earlier in the week as well, that Kodak loan, because now Kodak is going to move from film and cameras to 
key pharmaceutical ingredient manufacturer because, you know, that makes sense. Uh, and, and, and it's a loan from us. It's a loan from the government. It's a loan from the government. And I have to say, Peter Schiff, who I, who I talk about here every once in a while, I listened to one of his podcasts recently, and he made an excellent point that, of course, nobody talks about, again, because the Constitution is shredded, trampled on, and then shredded again in this country. But he makes a perfect point that the Constitution grants to the federal government the ability to borrow money, but it does not grant the federal government the authority to lend money. You get that? Our Constitution grants the federal government the ability to borrow money. It does not grant it the authority to lend it. But that's exactly what we're doing. Why? Because we've shredded the Constitution. We are a banana republic. I'd like to know who's buddy-buddy with Kodak Executive Management, Kodak Board of Directors in this White House. Does Donnie Boy, does Thunder Thumps have good friends in Kodak? Peter Navarro? Mnuchin, the Kushner family, I'd like to know who's benefiting from this because this stock, they were bankrupt. This stock was at $2 the other day, spiked up to 60 Now, I wonder how much money those executives who had stock options made on this. Does anybody care? Does anybody see any semblance of a crime, of some type of insider trading, of some type of manipulation? You want more of this? You want four more years Four more years of this? I don't. But this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to happen because the Federal Reserve printed nearly $2 trillion, gave it to the U.S. Treasury, and now you've got the White House with no oversight picking winners and losers. At the same time, the President of the United States in a recent State of the Union address says, hey, this, as long as I'm president, this isn't going to be a socialist country. Too late, Donnie boy. Too late. You could put Bernie Sanders' face on top of his, ugh, and you'd get the same thing. Picking winners and losers with our money. If Kodak knew what it was doing when it came to pharmaceuticals, then why do they have to come to us for the money? Why can't they go to J.P. Morgan? Why can't they go to Bank of America? Why can't they go to private equity? Why can't they issue shares and say, hey, we're going to revamp ourselves. Give us some money. Why do we got to bail them out? Are we going to get paid back on this loan? Because it's some $700 million. This ain't chump change. Is Kodak the best company to do this? Did we just crowd out a brilliant entrepreneur who did know what he or she was doing? But they weren't buddy-buddy with Trump or Mnuchin or Navarro or the Kushner family. And so, well, well too bad, Chuck. Better luck next time. How many more examples do you need? How can you vote and condone this? Because this is going to happen on both sides. And you'll scratch your head two, four, six years later. Why didn't anything change? Why is it the same stuff? Because you're voting in the same idiots. Because you're condoning it. Go ahead, go to your booth, because you're going to do what you want anyway. Go into your booth, pull your lever, get your little sticker that said, I voted. But don't come crying to me two, four, six years later saying, I, I can't figure it out. I can't figure it out. Well, shame on you. Enough's enough. Write your letters. Tell these people enough's enough. It's not even an option. Like I said earlier in the week as well, and last week, getting a letter from my uh, congressman, an email from my congressman, where do you want the money to go? Not the option of enough bailouts, no more. Cut spending. Nope, not, not even an option, not even on the table. And my congressman's a Republican. And again, they don't care. It makes no difference what party they're on. It's more, more, more. Now, the Republicans might put on a front that they're trying to be tough, but that's all it is. It's just a show. It's just a show. They were fine with the $4 trillion monstrosity, but the uh, now $1 trillion, oh my God, oh, we have to stop it. The children, my God, the children. Give me a break. What else do we have that was in this week? Oh, yeah, the despicable display, which, again, is more evidence of a country, unfortunately, in decline because the Democrats want to haul up Attorney General Bill Barr to have 
a hearing, which is all perfectly fine, and that's how it's supposed to be. But then when you actually listen to the hearing, it's a disgrace. It's a disgrace. You want to ask a question, allow the man to answer it. The interruptions, the claim, the, uh, bro, Mr. Barr, stop interrupting me. Stop interrupting me. I, I'm reclaiming my time. This is my time. It's also his time. And in fact, it's his hearing. You're there to hear him. If you want a grandstand, go on CNN, Fox, MSNBC, your local news station, and grandstand. When you're debating on the House floor, grandstand. Tweet something out. Get on Facebook. Do what you want to do. Have some respect. I mean, this is, this is why this country is at each other's throats. This is more divide and conquer stuff, too, because after, after all, this is more just a distraction at the end of the day. It's just to get you whipped up and deeper and deeper into your silos. And then, of course, you even have some of the idiot Democrats getting on the news and somehow with a straight face saying that it was Attorney General Bill Barr who was being rude and interrupting the House members who were asking questions. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I watched it. If that was the case, I would gladly say that Attorney General Bill Barr was interrupting them and was rude to them. It was the other way around. Just again, another piece of evidence for a country in decline. Can't even have a civil discussion within our government. You're of the other party. Somebody you don't like within the White House or within the administration can't even have a conversation. And this isn't going to stop. Trump gets reelected, it's th this isn't going to stop. Biden gets elected, this isn't going to stop. The Republicans will be just as nasty. Okay? Don't forget, they, they were nasty when Obama was in there. Don't forget. And don't say, well, not as bad. I don't want to hear this five-year-old argument. Oh, well, he was worse than me. He did it first. Bah, 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 bah. No, 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 no. You got to rise above it. You got to be bigger than this. Vote these people out. Do not vote for them. Get somebody else in. And then again, there's nobody really to vote for. That's the sad thing. Because any good, honorable people who might actually want to run and throw their hat into the ring, they don't want to be a part of this business. They don't want to be a part of this lifestyle. They don't want to subject their husbands or their wives and their children to this nonsense. And who could blame them? Who can blame them? So this thing has to run its course, unfortunately. And it's going to, and we haven't seen anything yet. So a terrible GDP figure. Unfortunately, the jobless picture is not getting any better. Stocks keep going up. The worse the economic news, the better it is for stocks because I'm not thinking about thinking about raising interest rates. So more stimulus, more money printing is coming. The Banana Republic, full steam ahead on the Free Lunch Express. Climb aboard. Enjoy your weekend, ladies and gentlemen. And just a reminder, I will be away next week, but we'll attempt to do as many podcasts next week as I can. Enjoy your weekend. Stay diversified, stay vigilant, and stay with the Capitol News. I am Alex Caritas. Godspeed.